more people have died from smoking than all other drugs combined, more than die in AIDS, fires, alcohol, car accidents uh, combined every year. First time I tried smoking, I was like seven. I actually started smoking, ninth grade. A lot of people look at smoking like, oh, it's cool, celebrities smoke, and there's like pictures of them smoking and you know, whatever, but it's really gross. Like your nails turn all yellow and your hair smells and your, it makes your skin nasty. Smoking sometimes interferes with physical activities like in dance. Like when we do productions like opening and closing, those are like four or five minutes long and once we get, you know, almost to the end of it, I feel like I'm gonna die, like I can't go on anymore. Like, you know, I can't breathe, everything feels like heavy. And, and even like walking outside, you know, or walking upstairs, I can't breathe. When I'm dancing, I just, I'm like, why, like, why do I smoke? It's like, this, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. And if I keep smoking like this, then I'm not going to be able to, because I'm not going to be able to breathe right, get through a routine at all. From our standpoint, um, if anyone ever identified any ingredient in tobacco or in smoke, um, as being hazardous to human health or as being a, um, something that shouldn't be there, we could eliminate it, but no one ever has. But your own research department has identified those components. Dr. Wakeham has told me that he agrees that there are components in tobacco smoke which are, which are carcinogenic. In, in quantities that would, that are, would be considered important? I don't think that so. That depends on how many you smoke, but he agrees that there are elements in cigarettes, in the content of cigarettes, which are carcinogenic. Well, there certainly are in the air of New York City. None of the things which have been found in tobacco smoke are at concentrations which can be considered harmful. But the components themselves can be considered harmful, can they not? Anything can be considered harmful. Applesauce is harmful if you get too much of it. I don't think many people are dying from applesauce. They're not eating that much. People are smoking a lot of cigarettes. Well, uh, let me say it this way. The people who eat applesauce die. The people who eat sugar die. Uh, the people who smoke cigarettes die. Does the fact that the people who smoke cigarettes die demonstrate that smoking is the cause? I mean, I think most people today sort of recognize that smoking is uh, really bad. Uh, it's hard to deny when one out of five of the deaths in the obituaries every night are due to smoking. Leading preventable cause of death. Uh, cigarettes will kill more Americans in three years than all world wars combined. It, it's kind of associated with the things that I do. If you go out and have a couple of drinks, you have to have smokes. It's a tie-in. It's addictive. You get into a habit of uh, smoking like after meals and on breaks and stuff like that. And you're kind of stuck. Uh, it affects me. Um, you know, I run up and down a ladder a bunch of times a day. I 
breathe in a lot of other stuff, you know, with my job, breathing in creosote, stuff like that. Um, probably should wear a mask, but I don't. I figure I smoke anyways, so, you know, why bother wearing a mask when I'm already putting the stuff in my body purposely? Would love to quit. Probably the main reason I haven't quit is uh, no willpower. Um, not enough of it anyways. And boredom, you know, and, and that's, I think that's probably one of the main reasons that, you know, I smoke. When I'm busy doing something, I don't have that urge. When I'm not busy is when I have the urge, you know, and like I say, it's normally when I'm driving around, you know, by myself. The main reason I would like to quit is, is money. Uh, I spend about $70 a week on cigarettes. Let me uh, begin my questioning on the matter of uh, whether or not nicotine is addictive. Let me ask you first, and I'd like to just go down the row, uh, whether each of you believes uh, that nicotine is not addictive. I heard virtually all of you touch on it, and just yes or no. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnson. Uh, Congressman, cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. There is no right. intoxication. We'll, we'll take that as a no, and again, time is short. If you could just, I think each of you believe nicotine is not addictive. We just would like to have this for the record. I categorize smoking as being an addiction, definitely. You feel a lot of like anxiety. I didn't find myself so much having being miserable or anything when I tried to quit, but he's seen it and it caused a lot of arguments. I done it once, I tried to do it twice and I have every ambition to quit smoking. I go outside to smoke mainly because of the baby. Uh, to respect, you know, I have Dominique as well. Um, Joel doesn't like it, he's not a smoker. So I go outside out of respect. Nobody else likes it and I know I shouldn't do it, <laughs> but I do. If you are a seafood lover, but are a little uncomfortable fixing it at home, it couldn't be easier. The most important thing to remember is not to overcook fish. It's done when the fish flakes easily with a fork. Whether you saute... Well, I've been working in radio for nine years. I'm also a voiceover artist, so I use my voice for a lot. And I also teach college. To a point, I, I understand how it would seem absolutely foolish that for someone like me who uses her voice for their bread and butter, that I would continue to do this and continue to be a smoker. And I wish I wasn't. I remember when I was a little kid and my mom was giving me the talk about smoking and she said the easiest way to quit is never to start. And man, if I could go back in time and, and, uh, and do that, it'd be so much easier than now. Mark Marin. Uh, Mark, I appreciate your stopping by. I know it's hard for you to get up, get up early. I didn't look. Do you smoke uh, menthol? Or no, I smoke, uh, I smoke Marble Lights. I'm trying to stop, you know, because there's, there's really no dignity left in the habit. You know? they, I mean, like, you know, smoking sections are disappearing. I was at, you know, I was at the airport. They used to have a smoking section at the airport. No mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. They now have these glass-encased rooms. You're not just a smoker. You're an example to other people. You're, <laughs> you're an exhibit at a futuristic zoo. I've you're seen those. The nicotine terrarium. You know, there ought to be a sign out front. This is the attic in its natural environment. <laughs> <laughs> Parents are walking by with children pointing. Look in there, honey. See? Those are smokers. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, wave to them. <laughs> Stop running, honey. You're teasing them. <laughs> Stop running. <laughs> you know they can't run. Stop it. <laughs> Listen while I tell you a story The tale of the Marlboro brand It came out of Richmond, Virginia one day And spread clear across the land From Manhattan Towers to Towering Pines 
lakes to the Rio Grande. When folks smoke for flavor, the one that they favor is the one with the Marlboro brand. The one with the Marlboro brand. Come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Tens of thousands of doctors in all branches of medicine in all parts of the country were asked that question. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Yes, surveys show more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Smoke Camels, the cigarette so many doctors enjoy. Brian, how are you? Hi, pretty good. How about you? Good. What's new? Um, well, I've been having this, uh, this kind of cough lately. It's, um, it's been kind of bothering me. And, and, uh, I remember last time I saw you, I know it's been a while, you, you told me you were smoking maybe a pack or so a day. What's the story with this? Uh, you know, the stories that the smokers told are the common stories. It, it, you know, life is a continuum. These are people, younger, healthier people, uh, sort of just beginning into their adult years, early and mid-adult years. They're healthy. They know smoking isn't good for them. For the most part, they're doing fine. They don't notice a lot of symptoms, a little bit of shortness of breath, or they become breathless with heavy activity, and they attribute that to the smoking, and they're probably right. But fast forward 20 or 30 years, maybe 15 years for some of them, these are the people who are going to be diagnosed with emphysema or COPD. Uh, fast forward another five to ten years, these are the people who are going to have heart disease, uh, oral cancers, lung cancers, uh, all of these other effects related to cigarette smoking. They're young, they're invincible, they're not thinking down the road yet. I think most clinicians can see somebody today and then envision them down the road 20 or 30 years saying what sort of impact are these behaviors today going to have on this patient? Uh, down the road. To a point, I, I understand how it would seem absolutely foolish that for someone like me who uses their voice for their bread and butter, that I would continue to do this and continue to be a smoker. And I wish I wasn't. I remember when I was a little kid and my mom was giving me the talk about smoking and she said the easiest way to quit is never to start. And man, Even though I tried many times, I never was able to quit. Uh, they say it's not addictive. Well, somebody's sick when they say that because that's the hardest thing in the world in, in my life to quit was smoking. I wasn't successful until I had my surgery. That pretty well stopped it for me. And to be honest with you, that sensation still with me today uh, of smoking, and that's been 12 years. In my case, it was strong. Uh, I couldn't concentrate on work or any other things that I wanted to do if I tried to not smoke for a day or two. Uh, and all I thought about was, can I get through the day? And I normally didn't. By time to go to bed, I'd have to have one, maybe two, maybe three, just to try to bring it back into my system. It's like a drug. It's like any drug that you inject into your arm. Once you reach that point where you're satisfied, you know it's not going to be much longer before it comes back again. Maybe even worse. Roswell Park Stop Smoking Clinic today. Uh, how many here have uh, quit smoking before? Uh, most of you. 
Well, that's uh, pretty normal. Most people have trouble. Well, I'm in a Department of Cancer Prevention uh, at Roswell Park. My goal is pretty simple, is try to find ways to uh, you know, prevent cancer from occurring. You can measure how much carbon monoxide that you have from smoking cigarettes today. We're a cancer center here, one of the oldest, over 100 years old. Uh, the number of patients that come into this hospital uh, every day uh, that are here because of smoking, it's about a third of our patient load. So, you know, if you had a vaccine to prevent a third of all cancers, uh, we actually have it. Uh, don't smoke. And so that my goal is very simply to try to facilitate that and uh, help people who do smoke uh, be able to quit. Most people who do smoke wish they could quit. And then uh, also to uh, educate people, uh, particularly young people, about uh, the hazards of taking up uh, a behavior that's an addiction that will uh, have somebody reach in their pocket and take the money out every day uh, and uh, eventually something they'll probably regret. test you know there's going to be emotional things that are going to test you physical things you know you just have to be prepared for them and you have to set up an action plan in the future to try to help yourself combat against some of these triggers and cravings that come up in the future the fact that somebody calls in getting help right there is a huge that's the hardest part is deciding that's what you're going to do and that you're going to give it a shot hi thank you for calling the new york state smokers quit line this is eric how can i help you mainly about staying busy, it's all about substitution. You know, uh, I say when you smoke when you first get up, you know, try to do something, jump into the shower. You know, uh, fix yourself some breakfast, clean something you didn't clean the night before, do whatever you gotta do. Just don't have that cigarette. <laughs> she called, I actually called for her husband, but they're both quitting together. And she goes, it's me, I'm keeping him from quitting. And I go, well, have you tried to quit? She goes, I've tried so many times, and she tried everything before. She goes, what am I doing wrong? Is it?" everybody who gets this? Is it just me who can't do it? And I go, well, some have the willpower, some need a little help, and that's exactly why we're here. And do you currently use tobacco products? And what tobacco products? They feel smoking is bad, it's just that it's hard and they feel that they haven't gotten the right assistance, but they, everyone I've talked to loves the program, they love what the state's doing for them. You know, the, the fact to get started with the free starter kit, the free patches, it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to them. Something wonderful happens when you change to Philip Morris. You'll feel better. Did you say I'll feel better smoking Philip Morris? Yes, you'll feel better. And here are the reasons why. In case after case, coughs due to smoking disappear. Parched throat clears up. That stale, smoked out feeling vanishes. That is wonderful. When you change to Philip Morris, you really taste your cigarette once again. The clear, clean taste of fine, mellow tobacco. And your food will taste better, too. But why do these wonderful things happen when I change to Philip Morris? Because you'll be smoking the one cigarette with a difference in manufacture. An important difference that avoids a common cause of cigarette irritation. Day after day, you'll be smoking the cigarette recommended by eminent nose and throat specialists to patients who smoke. The one cigarette proved definitely milder than any other leading brand. Whether you've been smoking for 10 months or 10 years, something wonderful happens. You'll feel better when you change to Philip Morris. So remember, next time you buy cigarettes, be sure you call for Philip Morris and feel something wonderful happen to you. It's kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm a young guy. It's not like it should be. I'm going to step on a second. I'm going to have you do a little breathing test because I like the breathing test because it shows even in a younger person that you're doing damage to your lungs. You can actually see it on the, on the readout. I, I'll show you right on that readout. I'll have you do I think when you initially raise the, the issue that smoking isn't good for their health among smokers, what do they say? Doctor, I know that. I've been told that a hundred times. So then I sort of segue into the, the idea, well, are you ready to make a quit attempt? Are you ready to make a quit attempt today? Uh, 
And their response to that question tells me whether they're really seriously ready to set a quit date or whether they're still sort of vacillating, still trying to get things set in their own mind, in their own social situation uh, about whether it's going to be today or at some point in the future. And one, a student that's smoking, can actually see somebody that's gone through an operation where they took their voice box and their vocal cords and have to breathe, sneeze, cough, take their lungs away from them with emphysema. Sometimes it'll hit them right at the moment and it'll wake them up. So imagine if all the deaths were caused by Evil doers. <laughs> so I said if they were due to, you know, Pablo Escobar or Osama, you know, we'd probably be uh, you know, looking at uh, Philip Morris as a tobacco terrorist, and then uh, you know the analogy of uh, the number of people who die every year, every week from smoking is five World Trade Centers worth of people. This is the worldwide trends. This is the developing world. And you can see the estimate is about 10 million deaths annually. Uh, so it'll be the next to famine, it's going to be the next uh, largest cause of death in the world. Well, folks, that about winds up our show. But don't go away, I've got a real surprise for you. See this handy cigarette case? Holds one full pack of Philip Morris. And it's really wonderful. Keeps your cigarettes fresh, keeps them from being crumpled in your pockets. Want one? Here's all you have to do. Bring two packs of Philip Morris with you next time you come to see our show. Show your two packs at the door, and we'll give you this handy Philip Morris package holder without any additional charge. There's only a limited supply, so don't miss your chance to get one. And now, till we meet again, this is Johnny, returning to the thousands of store windows all over America. Goodbye, folks. Good smoking. And... Oh, for Philip Morris!